current being measured in amperes. Uh, but what are amperes? And amperes are coulombs, and then don't know if I ever spelled this correctly, uh, per time, or I'll actually just do charge per time. So it's how many electrons are flowing uh, through some wire, through some conductor in a certain amount of time. So charge over time, and that's usually measured in coulombs per second. And let me look up to make sure I'm spelling coulombs correctly. Yes. Uh, the, the symbol for charge is often Q, and obviously time is T. Coulombs per second. And so having higher resistance allows us to resist um, those, that amount of charge over a period of time. And now the next thing I generally talk about, uh, first of all, I guess I've, I guess I've talked a lot. Uh, hopefully some of this is just a refresher for most of you. Uh, but again, there's no prereq for this course. So I just want to make sure that everyone's sort of on the same page. Um, so some, everyone asks at least one question in their chat. Uh, just to make sure things are sort of, sort of clicking and that you're, you know, you have a pulse for the day, I, I guess. And everything's sort of making sense. Sorry, I'm not, this isn't flowing as, you, as well as it usually does. So please, everyone, please ask at least one question in the chat uh, so that we just have some sort of feedback to know that things are going well. Um, Um, yes, you only have through-hole resistors in your kit, and I'm pretty sure that the blue body ones are the metal film resistors. Uh, when we when we actually solder the circuit boards, we'll actually use the surface mount resistors. Uh, what causes voltage? Uh, Buildup of I don't know electrons on one side of a medium versus other, and so like a battery just has a buildup of charge on the technically the negative terminal, because that's where you have an excess amount of electrons. So you have an excess amount of electrons on a negative terminal compared to the positive terminal. Uh, so you can have a potential gradient between those two terminals of the battery. So what causes voltage? A separation of charge uh, between some sort of medium, across some sort of medium. Other than their tolerances, what's the difference between the blue body and brown body resistors? I guess just how they're manufactured. Uh, so there's slightly different manufacturing. Uh, yes, functionally speaking, uh, they also have different color codes. So the blue body ones actually have four uh, color bands for the coding, and I'll actually tell you about that a little bit later. Uh, the brown body ones typically have three. Uh, the surface mount resistors are printed, are soldered on. Uh, so we're actually going to get a bunch of itty bitty resistors that you have to hold with a tweezer and then solder them onto the circuit board manually by hand. All right, so it seems like everyone's doing all right. Let me check my notes so I don't get too lost, I guess. Do I really just jump right into breadboards? Uh, 
Okay, well, I guess so. Uh, everyone go ahead and open up your kits and take out your breadboard. Go ahead and open up your kits and take out your breadboard. It's going to be in the package that's in a yellow, yellow packaging. And there's going to be an entire Arduino kit in there. We won't really use the Arduino in this particular workshop. Uh, you will use it in any of the other workshops we teach, like the Arduino workshop, Arduino milestone, or the biomedical instrumentation milestone, or also the smartwatch milestone. So go ahead and take out your breadboard. It should look something like this. Yours is probably bigger. And let's go ahead and start doing some building. Uh, go ahead and also take out an LED, so find an LED, find the resistors, and find your 9 volt battery. No, actually, that doesn't sound right. You're actually going to find your Arduino and your USB cable, so we're actually going to power things with the Arduino and the USB cable. So I'll just write this down so I'm not confusing anyone. Uh, get your breadboard. Your breadboard, LEDs. Or you can just get one LED, one X LED. Uh, resistors, um, Arduino, and USB cable. Uh, for right now. And we're just going to connect some stuff up together to demonstrate how to use a breadboard and to illustrate electricity. You can probably guess what's coming if you've done anything like this before. I'll give you a minute or two to collect yourself and get your stuff. All right, I'll assume that you have about everything now. And so let's take a look at the breadboard. So if you're still looking fine, I'm gonna just pause whatever you're doing right now and just pay attention to what I'm telling you now, just so we can be on the same page. And so orient your breadboard as you see on my screen here. And so you, there, you know, there are various sets of holes, I guess. I don't, I, there's a reason for why it's called breadboard. I don't remember what it is, uh, but that's something I can Google and share with you later. Uh, but you should see columns labeled A through E, as well as F through J. And then you should see a column with a plus sign and then a minus sign. Your minus sign is probably going to look blue, not black. Uh, that's fine. Same thing. And so things on a breadboard. So if you're looking directly on your breadboard and you're looking at the columns A, B, C, D, and E, uh, things are connected in columns but not in rows. So what that means is A1 is connected to B1, is connected to C1, is connected to D1, is connected to E1. Uh, so the same row, so things in the same row are connected across a column. I, I don't have a wonderful way of saying it, except to say that A1 is connected to B1, is connected to C1, is connected to D1, is connected to E1. Uh, similarly, A2 is connected to B2, is connected to C2, is connected to D2, is connected to E2. But A1 is not connected to A2, and I'll write that out here. So I'll put an equal sign to note that some things are connected. Um, E1, I'll do the same here. 